long, very long speech today, so I don't want to take your time that much. Right now, I just want to wish you and all of us a happy, healthy, and successful year. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> First of all, we would like to call out uh, our Health Culture Support Department Director. And um, where is she? I can't see. <laughs> Uh, we're continuing with the, okay. <laughs> welcome, we're continuing with the international office then today, right? Okay, welcome, welcome, hello. Thank you. Uh, hello everybody, uh, hello dear students, welcome to our university. Uh, we are happy to see here, uh, first of all, We want to talk about CKC, Health Culture Sports Directorate. Uh, I'm, my name is Gülcan Ayral. Uh, I'm manager of uh, International Students Relationship uh, Manager. And uh, let me introduce uh, Sevgi Günüşen. Uh, she works uh, in our group. Uh, we are under uh, CKC Directorate. Because of that, we want to uh, some information about CKC. Uh, CKC Health, Culture and Sports Directorate uh, provides, provides uh, health services, services and social, uh, cultural and sports uh, activities. Uh, CKC has got three different branch, main branch. One of them uh, health, uh, the other is culture, uh, the end of sports. Uh, under health branch, uh, we have got two, three counselors working in our psychological uh, counseling unit, and uh, there are uh, infirmary uh, parts in every campus. Uh, under culture uh, uh, branch, we have got students' clubs, uh, approximately 70 uh, activity clubs uh, with uh, about uh, 4,000 students. And we have got uh, five branch, uh, football, futsal, volleyball, basketball, and courtfall branch. Uh, if you have got any question uh, or uh, for uh, membership and any other details, information, uh, you can contact uh, CKC Directorate. Uh, you can search website of them because there are a lot of uh, information uh, you can find uh, their website. Uh, and uh, uh, Selman Utku, Mr. Selman Utku here, uh, if you have got any question, you can ask to uh, him. Uh, now we want to ask about uh, our office. Uh, as I said before, uh, we have got a office, uh, his name is International Relations, Student Relations Office, and we have got uh, a team, uh, East team is the International Student Support Team of Üsküdar University. Uh, this team uh, helped to identify to the academic, social, and administrative problems that international students might face and solve them with the concerned parties, uh, academic, uh, administrative departments, and uh, different people. The tasks of team, uh, our tasks are to talk to students about their issues uh, through mail, telephone, and face-to-face, -face -face, but uh, we prefer uh, especially uh, confusion uh, pro problems. We prefer mails, written uh, con uh, connection. Uh, to follow compliance the, that is forwarded by other units, to share necessary feedback with management, uh, to provide information through social media and website. Uh, please follow uh, this uh, website and social media because uh, we will share and we are sharing a lot of information uh, through them. To be a bridge between student and university departments, 
uh, to the enter and exit interview with students, uh, to do works of continuous improvement events for quality. Uh, this figure is important uh, because uh, you can see a uh, solution of students' problem or request uh, follow chart figures. Uh, these figures uh, has got yeah, students, the part of the biggest part of uh, these figures. Uh, and uh, as you know, you, got, you have got some of, a lot of uh, problems actually. Uh, if you uh, follow these steps, uh, we can your uh, we can solving your so, uh, problem easily and faster. Uh, what does it mean uh, if you have got any problem about academical and uh, administrative things? Uh, you should go to a point of uh, source of uh, problem. Uh, if you cannot solve. Uh, this problem, uh, and if you uh, don't know uh, where to go, you can come to us, ISTIM, uh, and uh, we can solve uh, your problem uh, as a ISTIM, uh, or we can share your problem with related department. Um, we are s uh, solving your uh, problems, uh, as you guess, uh, according to rules of university, but sometimes uh, your requests uh, can be different. Uh, that time, I, uh, we will share your problem with Solution Center, uh, and they will, share, they will share your problem with management team. Uh, they evaluate your uh, problems or requests and get back to you. Uh, some there are some benefits of ISTIM, uh, providing uh, student satisfaction, uh, reducing the university student support operations burden, and uh, building loyalty and trust bond between university uh, student and student, and university and student. Uh, for support contacts with uh, ISTIM, uh, you can see our contact information uh, as I said before, we prefer uh, written uh, information. Uh, if, uh, but we, we can say, we, we want to say something about mail. Uh, please, you can, uh, you, you should use your name uh, and student numbers. Uh, you should use uh, student mail address. Uh, and you should use a specific subject in your mails. Um, and uh, I suggest you follow our uh, social media address. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your uh, attention. If you have any question, uh, you can ask to Sevgi, or you can uh, come to our uh, office. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that presentation. Now, uh, from our de other departments, we have some videos. First, we will start with the Department of Communication and their video. Let's watch together. Üniversitesi Kurumsal İletişim Direktörlüğü olarak neler yapıyoruz, hangi alanlarda faaliyet gösteriyoruz sizlere kısaca bahsetmek isterim. Adından da anlaşılacağı üzere üniversitemizin tüm kurumsal iletişim ve tanıtım ihtiyaçlarına yönelik çalışmalar yürüten bir ekibiz. Direktörlüğümüze bağlı bilimlerden ilki aday öğrencilerimizle iletişim kuran eğitim kurumları tanıtım ve rehberlik hizmetleri birimi. Akademik yıl boyunca ve tercih döneminde aktif olarak okul ziyaretleri, fuar tanıtımları, kampüs turları ve tercih desteği gibi birçok önemli iletişim faaliyetini bu birimimiz aracılığıyla yürütüyoruz. Sizler de çalışan öğrenci programı kapsamında bu birimimize destek vererek hem 
üniversitemizin en iyi şekilde tanıtılmasına katkıda bulunabilir hem de aynı zamanda haçlığınızı çıkarabilirsiniz. Medya PR birimizin faaliyetleri de kurumsal iletişimin önemli bir parçasını oluşturuyor. Üniversitemizde yaşanan önemli gelişmeleri Üsküdar Üniversitesi Haber Ajansı ÜHA vasıtasıyla kamuoyuna aktarıyor, ulusal ve yerel medyada ağırlıklı şekilde yer almasını sağlıyoruz. Ayrıca açık hava reklamlarından dijital marketinge kadar farklı mecralarda reklam çalışmaları gerçekleştiriyoruz. Tüm haber ve duyurularımıza web sitemizden ve mobil uygulamamızdan erişmeniz mümkün. Önemli duyurularımızı yerleşkelerdeki dijital ekranların yanı sıra SMS, push mesaj ve mailing yoluyla da sizlere ulaştırıyor olacağız. İnternet üzerinden yayın yapan Üsküdar Üniversitesi Televizyonu ve Radyosu da haftalık akış doğrultusunda yayınlarını sürdürüyor. Pek çok farklı konu ve konuk ile gerçekleştirilen programlarınızı ilgiyle takip etmenizi umuyoruz. Direktörlüğümüz tarafından yönetilen sosyal medya hesapları aracılığıyla da bu alanda aktif şekilde yer alıyor. Paylaştığımız içeriklerle de fark oluşturuyoruz. Bu bağlamda tüm öğrencilerimizi Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube ve LinkedIn hesaplarımızı aktif şekilde takibi almaya ve etkileşimde bulunmaya davet ediyoruz. Üniversitemizde akademik yıl boyunca ulusal ve uluslararası çapta sempozyumlar, kongreler, seminerler ve sergilerin de aralarında bulunduğu yüzlerce etkinlik gerçekleştiriyoruz. Etkinlik birimimiz bu organizasyonların hazırlık ve icrasında aktif bir şekilde görev alırken tüm öğrencilerimizi birçoğu üniversite kültürü dersi kapsamındaki bu etkinlikleri takip etmeye davet ediyoruz. Üsküdar Üniversitesi çatısı altındaki etkinlikler, Merkez Yerleşke'deki Nermin Tarhan Konferans Salonu, Ayhan Songar Konferans Salonu ve Kuleli Konferans Salonu'nun yanı sıra Çarşı Yerleşke'deki Eminli bir 1 ve 2 konferans salonları ve Güney Yerleşke'deki Fuat Sezgin Konferans Salonu başta olmak üzere tüm salon ve sınıflarımızı gerçekleştirmektedir. Etkinliklerimize web sitemizdeki etkinlik takvimiyle tüm duyuru mecralarımızdan ulaşabilirsiniz. Son olarak direktörlüğümüz bünyesindeki Üsküdar Üniversitesi yayınları ile ilgili bilgi vermek isterim. Yayın evimizden çıkan eserlere şu anda çekimi gerçekleştirdiğimiz kitap kafenin yanı sıra İdefix, DNA, Kitap Yurdu gibi dijital satış platformlarından da ulaşabilirsiniz. Ayrıca Psikohayat, JNBS, Bağımlılık, Etkileşim ve Sosyal Bilimler gibi popüler bilim ve hakemi dergilerimizi web sitemizin yanı sıra kütüphanemizden ücretsiz olarak erişmeniz mümkün. Kurumsal İletişim Direktörlüğü'nün kapıları siz değerli öğrencilerimize daima açık olacak. Her türlü soru ve önerileriniz için Merkez Yerleşkideki ofisimize sizleri bekliyoruz. Başarılarla dolu bir yıl olması dileğiyle. Hoşçakalın. Let's continue with our student affairs department's video, please. So we have a couple of videos for you. They're all in subtitles. <laughs> Merhaba arkadaşlar. Bugün sizlere öğrenciler direktörlüğü adına bilgilendirmelerde bulunacağım. Öğrencilerimizin birçok akademik süreci öğrenci bilgi sistemi hmm. üzerinden takip edilmektedir. Devam durumlarınız, some... sınav notlarınız, uh, ders kayıt işlemleriniz, but... muhakkak talep sonuçlarınız... <gülüyor> Technical difficulties. <gülüyor> öğrenci bilgi sistemi üzerinden takip edilmektedir. Öğrenci bilgi sistemine web sayfamızda bulunan OBS kısımdan ulaşabilirsiniz. OBS girişinde öğrencilerin... Merhaba arkadaşlar. Bugün sizlere öğrenciler direktörlüğü adına bilgilendirmelerde bulunacağım. Öğrencilerimizin birçok akademik süreci öğrenci bilgi sistemi üzerinden takip edilmektedir. Devam durumlarınız, sınav notlarınız, ders kayıt işlemleriniz, muafiyet talep sonuçlarınız öğrenci bilgi sistemi üzerinden takip edilmektedir. Öğrenci bilgi sistemine web sayfamızda bulunan OBS kısımdan ulaşabilirsiniz. OBS girişinde öğrencilerimizin kullanıcı adları, öğrenci numaraları, ilk şifreleri, isminizin ilk harfi büyük harf şeklinde, TC kimlik numaranız ve yıldız işaretidir. Örneğin A... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, yıldız gibi. Belirlenmiş olan bu şifre ile öğrenci bilgi sistemine, ALMS uzaktan eğitim sistemine, STIX dosya paylaşım sistemine, ST mail sistemine ve wireless'a giriş yapabilirsiniz. Eğer şifrenizi hatırlamıyorsanız aşağıdaki bilgilerinizi girdikten sonra OBS'de bulunan cep telefonu numaranıza doğrulama kodu gitmektedir. Bu kodu 5 dakika içerisinde sisteme girmeniz gerekmektedir. 
Bu doğrulama kodunu girdikten sonra kendinize yeni bir şifre oluşturabilirsiniz. Birinci sınıf öğrencilerimizin ders kayıtları otomatik olarak yapılmaktadır. Dersler başladığında sisteme girip kontrol etmeniz yeterlidir. Öğrenci bilgi sistemimiz E-Devlet ve Yoksis'e entegredir. Bu entegrasyon sayesinde erkek öğrencilerin askerlik işlemleri online olarak yapılmaktadır. Ayrıca bu entegrasyon sayesinde E-Devlet üzerinden istediğiniz zaman öğrenci belgesi alabilirsiniz. Web sayfamızda bulunan öğrenci e-kitabımız sizlerin birçok konuda bilgilenmenizi sağlayacaktır. İncelemenizi tavsiye ederim. Üniversitemizin akıllı telefon uygulaması bulunmaktadır. Duyurular, bilgilendirmeler, öğrenci bilgi sistemine giriş, ders programları, not ilanları gibi birçok işlemi bu uygulama üzerinden yapabilirsiniz. Lütfen hepiniz bu uygulamayı telefonunuza indiriniz. Tüm öğrencilerimize tanımlanan ST uzantılı mail adresleri bulunmaktadır. Üniversitemizle iletişimde ve online sistemlere girişte bu mail adreslerini kullanmanız gerekmektedir. Web sayfamızda bulunan ST mail linkinden mail adreslerinizi öğrenebilir ve şifrenizi alabilirsiniz. Haftalık ders programlarımızı web sayfamızdan, telefon uygulamasından veya öğrenci bilgi sisteminden görüntüleyebilirsiniz. Uzaktan eğitim yoluyla verilen dersler için web sayfamızda bulunan uzaktan eğitim sistemi LMS üzerinden videoları online olarak görüntüleyebilirsiniz. Son olarak öğrenci şehir bürolarımızın tüm yerleşkelerimizde bulunduğunu bildirir. Hepinize başarılı bir eğitim hayatı dilerim. Okay, let's continue. Now we have another video for you. This is going to be from the Library Re and Research Center Department. How to build the library. Değerli öğrenciler, öncelikle hepiniz üniversitemize hoş geldiniz. Kütüphanelerimiz 1320 kişilik oturma kapasitesi, 65 bin üzeri basılı kaynak, e-dergi ve e-kitap olmak üzere 300 bin üzeri elektronik kaynağı ve siz öğrencilerimize eğitiminde yardımcı olmak için hazır kütüphanecileriyle Merkez Yerleşke İbrahim Tarhan, Çarşı Yerleşke Müzeyen Tarhan, Güney Yerleşke Namık Kemal ve Tıp Fakültesi Ayhan Songar Kütüphanesi'nde sizleri bekliyor. Kullanıcılarımız aynı anda 5 kitap ödünç alarak iki uzatma hakkı ile bu kitapları 45 gün kullanabilirler. Kütüphane web sitemizde öğrenci bilgileriyle giriş yaparak elektronik kaynaklarımızdan kurum içinde ya da dışında yararlanabilirler. Eğitimler sekmesinde ve ALMS üzerinden rehber videoları izleyebilir, online eğitimlere katılabilirler. Sayfamızdaki canlı yardım butonu ile bizlere 7.24 erişebilirler. Vize ve final dönemlerinde Merkez Yerleşke İbrahim Tarhan Kütüphanemizi çalışmalarınız için 7.24 açık tuttuğumuzu ve bugünlerde sıcacık çorba ikramımız olduğunu da bildirmek isterim. Hepinize yeni eğitim, öğretim dönemimizde başarılar dilerim. last video which is going to be about the career center in Üsküdar. Öncelikle Üsküdar Üniversitemize hoş geldiniz. Kariyer Merkezi Direktörlüğü, üniversite bünyesinde öğrencilerin uygulama ve staj süreçlerinden sektöre hazırlanma sürecine kadarki tüm operasyonları yürüten birimdir. Mezuniyet sürecinden sonra ise kariyer planlarına destek olmak ve mezun ilişkilerini yönetmek için faaliyetlerine devam eder. Öğrencilerimizin alan uygulamaları, staj ve gönüllü staj süreçleriyle ilgili başvuru sürecinden sigorta işlemlerine kadarki tüm adımları direktörlüğümüz yönetmekte ve uygulamaktadır. Alan uygulamaları sürecinde öğrencilerimiz anlaşmalı olduğumuz kurumlara yönlendirilmektedir. Direktörlüğümüzün diğer hizmetleri ise öğrenci ve mezunlarımıza kariyer danışmanlığı hizmeti vermek, mezun ve öğrencilerin sektör kültürü alabilmesi için iç eğitimler ve etkinlikler düzenlemek, öğrencilerimizin kamu ve sektör ile iç içe olmasını sağlayabilmek için firma işbirlikleri yapmaktır. Bu işbirlikleri ile öğrencilerimizin ve mezunlarımızın sektör networkleri gelişmekte ve istihdam süreçlerinde destek olmaktayız. Öğrencilerimiz üniversitemizde adım attıkları ilk andan itibaren kariyerlerini şekillendirebilmek için kariyer danışmanlığı hizmeti talebinde bulunabilirler. Bu hizmet okudukları bölümlere göre meslek tanıtımı, özgeçmiş hazırlama desteği, mülakat simülasyonlarını kapsamaktadır. Danışmanlık hizmeti alabilmek için web sistemimizde bulunan randevu formunu doldurmaları yeterlidir. Öğrencilik sürecinizde bu hizmetleri size sağladığımız gibi mezun olduktan sonraki süreçte de aynı hizmetleri direktörlüğümüzden almaya devam edebilirsiniz. Aramıza tekrar hoş geldiniz. 
Okay, that was the end of our videos. <laughs> so now I would like to uh, invite Mr. Ardal Urdik from our Information Technology Department for his presentation. He will be presenting in Turkish, but I will continue, don't worry. <laughs> Merhabalar, hoş geldiniz. Ben sizlere mail sisteminiz hakkında bilgi vereceğim ve bu mail sistemimize bağlı olan sistemler hakkında. Hello, welcome dear uh, guests. He is going to teach you about our online systems and how to use your email addresses. Her öğrencimize bir mail adresi verilir. Each student gets an email address. İsim nokta soyisim et st nokta uskudar nokta ed nokta tr. The format is going to be the name dot surname uh, at uh, st dot uskudar dot edu dot tr. So it's going to be like this. Standart bir şifre verilir. It's going to give you a, a password and you will change it later on. İsminin baş harfi büyük, TC kimlik numarası. So yok. the password for everybody, for their first password is going to be the first letter of your name, which is going to be a capital letter, plus your uh, Turkish identity number. It's um, written in your documents or it's going to be written on your residency as far as I remember. And at the end, uh, you need to have a star. So I'm sorry, there is going, there's an example right there. Daha sonra bu şifreyi tek şifre nokta uskudar nokta ed nokta tr adresinden değiştirebilirler. <gülüyor> Mailinizin şifresini tek şifre nokta uskudar nokta ed nokta tr adresinden değiştirebilirsiniz. You can change your uh, email address at where is the link? Okay, we are going to show you the website where you can change your password. Mailinize Üsküdar Üniversitesi Web sayfasında bulunan ST mail linkine. You can uh, get your email address from the Üsküdar email website that has the, you can see it ST email actually right there. Açılan web sayfasında sağ üst köşede. So when you enter the website it's going to be on the right hand corner, on top right hand corner. Office uygulamasını indir. You need to download office. Seçeneği bulunur. There is an option. <gülüyor> Lisanslı ofis kullanım olanağı verir. And then your email address becomes an official email address. bt.üsküdar.tr adresinde e, internet erişimi, e, ofis programlarının kurulumu hakkında detaylı bilgiler vardır. All the extra information on how to use the office and how to use the email is going to be on this website bt.üsküdar.edu.tr. Ayrıca öğrenci numarasını yazıp mailini öğrenebileceği bir e, alanda mevcuttur. There is also a box where you can just enter your student ID number and get your email address. Hescode.üsküdar.tr adresinde bulunan alanda mail adresinizi ve şifrenizi yazarak e, kartlarınızı aktif hale getirebilirsiniz. In this part, especially if you're a new student and you cannot enter into the university with your student ID, you need to uh, get your student ID and your uh, high school registered onto your student card and then you will be able to enter and leave as you wish. <laughs> Bu sayede kartlarınız aktif hale gelir. Uh, I'm sorry, and this is the website, hescode.üsküdar.edu.tr. If there are still any students that have not done this, please do take a picture of this website. It's very important for you. And um, then you cards will be active to use. Öğrencilerimizin kullanıcı e, internet ağı göründüğü gibidir. This is the Wi-Fi that you can use. You, you use your email address and your password. If you go, go on to Wi-Fi on your phones, it's going to be st.üsküdar. And then you click on it, enter your st uh, student email address, uh, password, sorry, and you can use the Wi-Fi at school. Android ve iOS cihazlarla ilgili alanda görüldüğü gibidir. Yine kullanıcı adı, e-mail adres ve So it doesn't really change if you're using Android or iOS. It's the same format. This is how you log in with kullanıcı adı. In short, it just means username. Parola just means password. Again, email and password. 
Android cihazlarda sertifika alanı doldurulması gerekir. For Android users you need to fill out on this site when you try to enter it will show you this. It just says again your email and then again password actually. Windows işletim Windows bilgisayarlar içinde internet erişim ayarları. For Windows users this is how to uh, log on to Wi-Fi. Uh, again you go on again you use student email again password. And then again it's going to be on this website. This website is important for you if you still have not everything connected by the way. bt.uskuda. This is your student ID card if you still have not received it you should have. Yeni kart talebi, resim değişimi, kırık kart için öğrencilerine So başlayalım. to get a new card and to get a new uh, picture or any kind of changes you need to apply to student affairs. Turnike geçiş problemleri için bilgi teknolojilerine gelir. If you're not able to um, pass the gate and go enter the university, there's probably something wrong with your card, so you need to contact information technology. Kütüphane sistemi. Library system, online library system. Sanal kütüphane sistemimizde kriptolog sistemi vardır. Mm -hmm. İnternet erişimi için kullanıcı adı mail, şifrede mail şifresi olarak. So if you try to log on to any um, Üsküdar, uh, Üsküdar University's computer, you need to use um, virtual library. It just, whenever you just search Google, this uh, there is this website that just comes up and you need to enter um, You have to choose student or öğrenci. It might be in Turkish. And then again, email, again, password. Buyurlar. Announcements regarding anything related to the university. ekranlar bulunur. On the, on each level there is like a, kind of like a smart board where they have the announcements. SMS ve mail sistemiyle duyuru alabilirler. You can uh, choose to get any announcements from your uh, messages and email. Mobil uygulama mailleriyle açıp bildirimleri de açabilirler. If you download the app, Eskizar University app, you can actually get your announcements directly to your phone. Ayrıca tek şifre sistemi kullanılmaktadır üniversitemizde. <gülüyor> OBS, <gülüyor> LMS, Stix, Mail, bütün sistemlerin şifresi aynıdır. So every online system that we have, maybe you've heard your teacher say it, OBS, Stix, LMS, stuff like this, all of them you choose um, So, for example, this is OBS system. Let's go one by one. Uh, yes. Aynı ekranlarda şifre sıfırlama kısmı, reset password kısmı var. You can have, yes, there's also a reset password and X şifre nasıl oldu? Reset password. İlgili alanlar doldurulur. If in the case that you forget your password, this is a reset password page. You can change your password for it. Telefona gelen SMS. And you get a code on your phone. And you can reset it like this. Şifre değiştirilir. And you can change your password. Bu kadar. Teşekkür ederim. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Serda. Now I would like to call on International Relations Office to have their lovely presentation for us. <laughs> Hello, dear acad acad uh, academicians and dear students. This is Özge from International Relations and Exchange Programs Unit. So I will give you information regarding the abroad opportunities uh, offered in Üsküdar University to all of our students. So um, as a starter, um, under the Erasmus program, we offer our students two different type of programs. First of all, we call it study mobility, the other one called as internship mobility. Since 2013, Üsküdar University um, start uh, implementing this Erasmus program I mean, it's been too long since we are implementing and carried out the Erasmus program. And since 2014, actually in the Erasmus program, there were different type of mobilities and exchange programs since 2014. It's been called as it's the name of the, all the programs has been changed to Erasmus Plus. So all the European Union programs founded by European Union, uh, all the names has been changed to Erasmus. Uh, plus program. 
Uh, as Üsküdar University, we have 97 inter-institutional agreements with our partners, and it, it means that we have 381 uh, departmental agreements. So within that agreements, you are able to visit one of our partners for a certain period of time during your studies here at Üsküdar University. As I said earlier, there are two types of mobility for the students. Uh, first of all is study mobility. In this study mobility, um, if we have bilateral agreements related to your departments, that means in an academic year, you are able to visit, you are able to study one of uh, our partners. And the most important things I would like to, um, how to say, I would like to remind you again, there must be a bilateral agreement between our partners. So uh, for uh, the list of the Erasmus agreements, you should visit erasmus.uskudar.edu.tr website. In the internship mobility, there is no such a thing uh, as bilateral agreements so that it allows you to gain working experience in any European countries without having bilateral agreements. Uh, from the 10th of January, we will start to um, organize uh, information meetings to all of you. Uh, you are all invited to our meetings, and the application period will be started from the 31st of January till 4th of March. And after the application ends, there will be an English exam, but uh, the, we have not decided yet when the English exam will be held. So um, it's important to know when the applications will start, but uh, students who are studying at prep school are not eligible uh, to apply for Erasmus program because we, have, we, have, we should have your, um, to select you, we should uh, have some criteria. First of all, we need your GPAs. So um, second of all, you should take the Erasmus exam. Um, GPAs will be, um, how to say, uh, evaluated when you complete your first year of first semester in your departments, so that you all are just prep school students, and that's why you have to complete the prep school, and after that, when you start your departments, when you start your programs, and when you complete first semester, then you will be eligible to attend the program. Uh, in, as a selection criteria, I said that we use your um, English exam result and uh, your GPAs. We are taking 50% from that points, and then it creates your Erasmus uh, points, Erasmus score. And that score, uh, within that score, we are able to put you in a queue uh, between your friends, between uh, in your departments, actually. In the study mobility, as I said, you're not eligible yet, but once you um, complete your first year of your department, you will be one of the students who can apply. And the minimum um, duration of the mobility in the study, in the study mobility is uh, two months, and you can exceed it till 12 months. And within the Erasmus program, uh, in your fourth year of studies at Üsküdar University, in your bachelor degree, you have right to benefit from, um, from the Erasmus program uh, for 12 months. You can just take this advantage by using only study mobility, or you can just prefer to attend internship mobility. It, uh, it just changes uh, with your academic plans. So uh, that means uh, you're not only attending program for one time, and you have uh, many times the attend program benefit from the program. But the most important thing is having a bilateral agreement uh, with your departments. In the internship mobility, the minimum duration is the same. Uh, for two months, you're just um, getting experience, international experience in any European or uh, European Union candidate, candidate countries. So uh, I know that there is already idea in your mind, but um, we will give you uh, more detailed information than our uh, meetings, um, our information meetings, so that um, I would like to invite you all of the 
all of you to our meetings. And I'd like to say that we also use online application system. And once you apply it, you will see that you have to submit some documents, but you can just upload those documents when the application periods are start are on. Uh, here is a website of our application system. You will just visit erasmusexchange.uskudar.edu.tr and as I said, you can just check the website and see our uh, bilateral agreements and you cannot apply just for now. Uh, where can you reach us? Uh, our office is located in this building in the second floor and our room number is 224. So um, if you're not able to visit us, you can just send email to erasmus at uskudar.edu.tr or you can just call us. And here are the things I would like to say regarding the program. And if you have any questions in your mind, so you are free to ask me. So, uh, no questions? Yeah, maybe it's because you're just prep school students yet. Thank you for listening to me. Good luck to you. Okay, thank you for that lovely presentation. Now I would like to call back our department head, Dilek Batu Sachar. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Let me see. How many A1s and A2s in the classroom here in the conference hall? Any? B1s? B1, not many. B2, where are the others? Where are they? Okay, I don't think so. That's not the whole people who should be here. Anyway, I'm going to use the target language as A2 plus or B1 because it means that if you pass with the proficiency exam, you have to be in your faculty departments and you're B1 and B2, which means that you can't pass. Am I right? So we'll use basic language, then you can understand everything about it. So let's begin. Okay, the most important thing. Right now, maybe you don't believe that that's a very important thing to have that Pearson Assured Certificate, but actually it is very important. You can understand the importance of it at the end of the graduation, at the end of the school years, because it proves that we're internationally proven that we are a Pearson Assured Organization and this certificate shows that you are an accredited person and you're actually a really B2 band student or person in level, in your English level. And we also give you the university certificate. That's also another important thing in your life, in your career. Okay. <clears throat> what do we have in hand? I know that people are going to watch this video later on. I'm talking about the A1 and A2 students. So let's begin with the A1 thing. In A1 and A2, as you can see, they have four modules, one, two, three, four. And A2 is the same. Why? Because A1 is the beginner level and A2 is the elementary level. We call them basic levels. That means that they don't know English well. And that is why they have four modules of studying. A module consists of eight weeks. It means that if we have four modules, then we can have 32 weeks of study for A1 and A2. Got a deal? What about B1 and B2? B1 and B2 story is different. In B1 and B2, you have, as you can see, I'm sorry, you have two modules, one and two, one and two. 
It means that somewhere in February, according to your academic calendar, you're going to finish, graduate from the prep school, if you are successful enough, of course. So you have two modules, which means that 16 weeks of studying until February. It's in your academic calendar. You can see it there. What can you do after that? Think about that. You're a very successful student. You have a good average of the two modules. At the end, you have your proficiency exam, and you pass, right? You two choices. The first choice of yours is to continue the program in the prep school, to become a C1 student and graduate with the C1 program. In this case, you have the third module and the fourth module to cover on as a C1 student. If you'd like to continue your program with the faculty department, then you can jump into your studies in your faculty department. I'm saying it again, two choices. The first one, is to continue the study in C1 in the prep classes, and the other is to go to the faculty departments. Right? Okay. And by the way, our C program is a very popular program. Students love to enter in. And what about the learning outcomes? At the beginning of the year, so many of you, especially in A1 and A2 cases, have very low English, very low kind of English, let's say. Sometimes they can't write sentences, sometimes they can't utter just a single word in their mouths, but at the end of the program, after B2 program, I'm not talking about the C1, C1 is something very professional, it means that you can write 330 or 400 words Essays. I'm talk, talking about the techniques of the essays, something like argumentative, cause, effect, compare, contrast, advantage, disadvantage type of essays. And uh, by the way, you can also write more than 400 words. This is just the limit of it. And uh, we're using, of course, the authentic text. Then you can understand all of them. And uh, it means that you can follow your own articles in your own field, which is also going to be easy for you. And of course, you can take notes and understand the lectures. When you go to your faculty departments, it will be easier for you to understand them or not take notes about them. Okay. We're having the modular system, as you know. Well, we know that it's a difficult system when you just check it from the side of the teachers or side of the students, but it doesn't matter against all of all us, against all of the disadvantages of it, it has a lot of advantages. And one of them is pushing you into the higher levels very easily. It forces you. It forces you and the teachers to go up and up for good implementation. All right. Any other things about the assessment system? In the first week, as you know, we generally have the orientation program and everything. On the other module, you'll see that the first week is something like an orientation. But on the third week, we're beginning with the quizzes pop quizzes. These are short exams. And the average, the percentage of the pop quizzes is 10. We also have teacher assessment grade. That's also 10%. In the middle of the module, which is the fourth week of it, we have the in-module assessment. And it is 30%. At the end of the module, what is the end of the module, by the way? On which week? Tell me. How many weeks do we have in a module? 
Tell me. Come on. Eight. What are you doing there? Are you listening? In eight weeks. The fourth week is what? In module assessment. A big exam. A compact exam. It has everything in it. Reading, writing, main course, listening. All together with the skills. On the eighth week, I mean at the end of the module, and the name is the same, end of module assessment, again we have a very big exam, including reading, writing, listening, and main course. We call main course or use of English as the grammar, of course. Are we all okay for that? And the percentage of that is 50. So, beginning with the third week, we have exams. Fourth week, we have exams. Fifth week, we have exams. Sometimes sixth week or sometimes seventh week. Um, on week seven, we have exams. And on the eighth week, we have a big exam. It means that you have to attend all of the classes. You cannot miss any time during your studies. And you have to be ready for the exams, which will make you understand more about English. We're not trying to torture you. We're trying to make you develop more. OK. And what happens? What else happens? As I told you, if you are an A1 and A2 student, it means that you have four modules. You're taking some exam results from the first module. Second, again, you have those exams. Third, you have, again, those exams. Fourth, you have, again, those exams. We are adding them into each other. And then we have the average of those four modules. Think about that, your B1 and B2 students. It means that we're taking the uh, academic um, arithmetical calculation of the first module and the second module. Then we have the average of it. And we're taking 60% <coughs> of that. Great. Are we all OK for that? But I said that 60% comes from your modules, OK? And what about that one? That's just one exam at the end of the year or in February, at the end of B2 or B1. You're also entering into that. And we're taking 40% of that exam. When they come together, they become a hundred. Am I right? Yeah. If you have 60 and over in that grade, that means you can pass. If it is less than 60, it means you can't pass. I'm saying it again. Your passing depends on not just that one and not just that one. Why am I saying this? Don't come to me complaining and saying that. Well, teacher, I got an 80 from the proficiency exam. God's sake, I want to pass. No. No. The answer for that question is no. If Think about that your overall average in the modules is 20. Because 20 plus 80 means what 100? When you divide it into two, it becomes a 50. And 50 is not a passing grade. Do we understand each other? Do we? Say yes if you do. Loudly. Yes. Lovely. OK. OK, let's continue, if I can. Yeah. Yeah, this will show you. Well, yeah, I know that there are no A1 students. But for example, in A1, in module one, as you see, 
third week we have two exams. What do we have on fourth week? Tell me. In module assessment, a big exam, right? Okay. Week five, we have an exam. Week seven, we have an exam. Week eight, we have a big exam. Okay. And the modules are going like that. Let's check it with B1 and B2. The same. The same. This time you have more exams. Because in writing, for example, you have a timed writing plus a graded process writing. I'll just detail them later on. So, and that is the fourth week's exam. I said you have four skills, then you have four components in the exam. And in the modules, as you can see, we're all assessing, we're all testing them. And in B1 and B2, the same. Nothing is isolated. If in your studies you have presentation, you're assessing it. If we have speaking, we, have we are assessing it. Okay. First you learn, then you are going to be assessed about it. And on the eighth week, again, you have the exam, and again, you have the four skills that you've learned so far. You look at the pie. Again, you have the same thing. That's the teacher assessment grade taking from, coming from your teachers. That is the pop quizzes, the small, the short uh, exam style. That's the in-module assessment in the middle of the module. And that's the end of module assessment at the end of the module. Okay. 10, 10, 30, and 50. Fair enough. And again, the end of year grade not just with proficiency exam results, but with the overall averages of the modules, you have, if you have 60 and over, it means congratulations, okay? Yeah, that's the proficiency exam. Some of you have entered it, uh, did enter it, and uh, you know, we have two reading passages inside it. And while listening, it's a bonus, by the way, for you. And note taking a speaking part and the writing part. You'll face with it again in February. And uh, by the way, you know that there is a sample of the proficiency exam on our website. You can always check it. What about the special cases? But take a picture of that. Well, I know that you're, it's going to be recorded. You're going to be uh, watching it later on because it's recorded, but take a picture of it. If you are a B1 and B2 student, think about that. You're a very successful student. All modules long. I'm talking about module one and module two, of course. You have 85 and over on your average, all right, in all of your exams. It means that stress-free, no stress, nothing, we're telling you, you don't need to enter into the proficiency exam as you wish, wish us anything. You can go to your faculty department or you can study the C1 level studies. So, it is for motivation, it is for making you more successful, and there are a lot of students who are trying to do that so. What about A1 and A2 students? I'm sorry, but they are basic learners. And a basic learner needs more time to learn things. So they have four modules to cover. But Think about that, you're an A2 level student, and you are very successful, really, amazingly. Think about that, your overall average is 90. What can you do? 
you can write a petition form to Sueda Hanum, and you can say that you want to be a B1 student. After a committee's decision, the testing office, your advisor, and some other people working on your own classroom come together, get a decision, get a decision about you, and if they say yes, you can be a B1 student. And it is like the domino stones. If you become a B1 student, and again, if you have that 85 in your hand, it means that you can also go to your faculty department without any proficiency exam. Preferable, right? So be successful. All right. Okay, the balance. We are because the first module of the study is easy peasy. So it is 20%. And the last one, the last module is a bit difficult. Of course, that's the development part. We can see the implementation of you there. So it is 30%. What about B1 and B2 levels? They have just two modules, which means that they have equal balance in it. And the teacher assessment grade. That's a lovely grade, by the way, because the testing office gives your teachers at the beginning of the year a kind of a criteria. Do you know what the criteria is? I mean, on it, for example, um, there are some important information about you. Does the student do the homework on time? Is it a good quality homework? Or is it fake or plagiarized, taken from somewhere? Or things like that. Your teachers are filling on that form or that criteria according to your situation. They're mentoring you, of course. And then they get the results in their hands. And after all, they give you a kind of a grade, which affects you 10%. Inside it, there are the online homework, your participation. But when I say participation, especially on the online program, I don't mean that just turning on your computer and getting lost in the house or sleeping. I mean you have to be in front of your teacher, watching your teacher very carefully, being very interactive in the classroom, communicating, going into the break rooms, doing exercises with your friends, that kind of attendance I'm talking about. That's not just attendance, also how you participate into the classroom. And the other thing is, uh, excluding the testing office exams, like the pop quizzes, like the in-module assessments and end-of-module assessments, you also are going to have exams, in-class exams, which are done the class teachers. You're also tested like that. And your teachers are going to use them on their grades. And the last thing about the teacher assessment in reading, use of English, and listening is about the vocabulary notebook and the journals that you're writing to your teachers. What about in writing? In writing, you also have your writing portfolio, and others are the same. That writing portfolio is crucially important. And now the bands, the levels. B2, Islington, beginning with that I, it means that you come here as an intermediate student. So there is an association between the letters like intermediate and Islington. I mean, it gives us a kind of association, by the way. So you have 21 hours of class teaching, 
21 hours, right? What about B1? B1 is the same. What about A2? You know that they have four modules. On the first two modules, they have 24 hours. On the second, third, I'm sorry, third and the fourth modules, they have 22 hours. In A1, module 1 and 2, 25 hours. Module 3 and 4, 23 hours. What about the repeat classes? Well, of course, they are repeating. Well, of course, they failed. And that's why they have 24 hours of teaching. They repeat the classes after the second module, when they become the third module student, and after the fourth module, so they have the fifth module. OK? Well, you can see the chart, the development of a student in your student handbook, too. So please read it when you have time, or find time to read it. In writing, again, that's the development. In the uh, lower classes, beginning with the word, even the word, not the sentence, and going up into 350 words essays. In the very upper level, something like C1, you have paraphrasing, quotation, referencing, those kind of things also. And the class schedules. You know we have two shifts. We have the morning shift and the afternoon shift. A1 and A2s are in the morning shift, beginning at 8.30, ending up at 12.55. The afternoon people, like you, beginning at 1.15 and ending up at 5.40. These are B1 and B2 students. That is really important. Well, you know, we say that we're two kinds of programs. One is online, and the other is the hybrid program. In the online one, you choose, you chose it. It's OK. You can be online. But please listen to me very carefully. In the online learning, your cameras should always be on. Say it with me. My camera is going to be on. Come on. My camera is going to be on. Yeah. Language is for communication. You're learning this language for communication, to understand each other. No one likes to talk in front of a black hole. Am I right? For sure. And your teachers are really wondering and worrying about you. You will see that. They want to feel, sense, understand that you're learning. Without seeing anything, how can they feel it? It's a must. Otherwise, you'll be counted as absent. Be sure about that. This is number one. Number two, about, again, the online program. Yes, we are taking the attendance. It doesn't matter you're online or hybrid. Every lesson that you attend means that we're taking the attendance. Teacher, if I watch the online program on the recorded videos, can I be counted as present? No. We're talking about synchronized live lessons. As a student, your responsibility is to be in the lesson. If you're watching it on the recorded form, it means that you need to watch it again. You want to add something. You want to learn more. 
That's why they are recorded. Or let's say you were really very ill and you couldn't attend the class and you want to watch it. Yes, you can watch it anytime you want to. But it doesn't make you present in the classroom. Are we all okay for that? Good. Okay. About the hybrid program. Well, after the survey, thank you very much, by the way, we understood that all of you want to come here. It was something like 96%. Yeah. So uh, I can't understand that. You really want to feel that you're university students. That's very understandable. And it's an honor for us to make you be here. But there's a but here. The capacity of the classrooms. That's an issue. I mean, the capacity of the classrooms are very well designed for the normal, healthy lives. But in the pandemic situation, you know that we cannot put 25 or 26 students into a classroom for your health, for the teacher's health, for all of us' health. So that is why we just divided the classroom into two in order to give everybody equal chance to be here. But it doesn't mean that you can't come here on the other days. You can always welcome. Like what? We have, I'm going to tell you, we have the learning center hours, writing center hours, speaking club activities. So after class, before class, you can be here. But at the minute of the lesson, if it is not your turn to come here, so you have to be online, some of you. And some of you will be hybrid. Another question coming from the students. Well, teacher, well, yeah, there were colors on the website saying that some of us will come to school on the 18th of October and the other are coming on somewhere in November, 15 November, I guess so. Does that mean that my program begins on November the 15th? Absolutely not. We have a calendar. We announce it everywhere. We send you messages. It's written everywhere in the world that we began on the 18th of October. Did we begin on the 18th of October? Everybody tell me. Is there any classroom who didn't even begin right now teaching? No? So, everything began on the 18th of October. That November something means that now it's your turn to come into the classroom for the face-to-face -face education. Are we all okay for that? Say yes. yes. <laughs> Lovely. So, because we got uh, some kind of letters and complaints about some of the students, and they were right to say that, they wanted to, they're demanding, of course, they're asking or requesting, let's say, about having some more time in the university. You know, at the beginning we announced that on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you'll be in the classrooms, and on Thursday and Friday, the system is going to be online for all. Remember that? Okay. Now, after the request, we decided that we have Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday, as the hybrid classes. In between. What is in between? Wednesday, lovely. On Wednesday, we have the online program. That doesn't mean that 
the online people will have one day teaching. No. Other days, they're also getting their education in the classroom when the hybrid students, face-to-face -face students, are inside their classes. But for all of you, Wednesday is the day for the online classes. You're not coming to school. What for? We said that all of you are going to have the exams online, so we need that day. The other days, if you are in the hybrid program, just check it on the website and understand in which group you are in accordingly come to school. Other days, you are in the online program. Are we all okay for that? Lovely. And yes, all the lessons are recorded, by the way. And there was another question that the students were asking to me. I forgot it. Later on, maybe I can remember. Yeah. What is this? Let me see. If I can see it, of course. Can I? No, the screen, I guess. Hello. You can hear me. Yeah. Can you see the book list? Do you know where I found it? You see the green line there? There it is written, administrative information. Okay? Click on it. Then there appears the book list. Click on the book list. There are three items there. Cambridge, National Geographic, and Macmillan. In A1 and A2, the majority goes to Cambridge publisher. In B1 and B2, uh, there is equality, I believe, because you have one main course book from Cambridge, you have reading book from Macmillan, and you have listening book from Nacio, National Geographic. Okay. Try to understand which books you're going to buy. Then buy your books. I don't want you to buy wrong books. That's why we put the book list there. All right. That is number one. What is number two about the books? These are A1 books, by the way. As you can see, there are, how many books are they? There are 12 books. And yes, that Pearson issued certificate. But that doesn't mean that in the first module, a student is responsible of buying and studying all of those 12 books. It's impossible physically. As you see, it's written modules here, right? Can you see that? OK. It means that. In the first module, these people, these A A1 people, are going to buy those ones. One, two, three. Module two, again, three books. One, two, three. Module three, again, one, two, three. Module four, one, two, three. And the Pearson certificates. You can buy the Pearson First Certificate anytime you'd like to, by the way. About B1 and B2, let's say. A2 seems uh, very similar to that one. But as you see, here it is written, no books to be continued. Then it means that uh, in Module 4, they don't need to buy any books. In B1. In module one, you have three books. Module two, you have three books. And you have a Pearson Assured Certificate. A1 had 12 books. B1 has six books. What is the difference? What is the difference? Lovely. 
You have two modules, they have four modules. Your English is better than them, their English is lower than you. They need more development with more modules. You need, you need also more development, let's say. Okay, <laughs> okay, I don't want to say that word. <laughs> okay, in MB2, in module one, you have three books. Module two, you don't have any books. Why? Because you're continuing the books. The books haven't finished yet at that time. All right. You can do two things. I'm talking about all of the students of the prep. Either as an A1 and A2 student, because at the end you can, you can study all of them. You can buy all of the books in a pack. A year long study. All right. Or you can buy which ones are necessary for module one. It depends on yourself, on your budget. It's not our business to tell you or force you to buy the books when. But I can force you for one thing. What is that? Well, you need books to study. It means that you have to buy your books. This is number one. And you have to buy the original books. This is number two. Because we're using the online program and you need the codes on the books. All right. So buy your books. Another thing. Not about the books, by the way. That one. Here you can see, can you see, can you see the arrows here? Huh? Can you see the arrows? Good. It says student book. Okay? Everybody is asking me some questions about the program, about everything, about prep school. Don't do that. Go to our website. That's our website, azalukiskudar.edu.tr. Go there, find the student book. By the way, it is Turkish, English, and Arabic. Choose the language and read it. All right. I need to do the same joke. Because I don't know Arabic, that's why I'm not very sure about what is written on the Arabic version of it. But I checked the English and the Turkish version, so I'm very sure about them. So if you find a way to read it in English, it will it'll be preferable, by the way. And I believe some of the classrooms have chosen their class representatives. Is that right? I need these representatives. If you haven't done that yet, please go to your classroom and uh, make an election. Find yourself a responsible, hardworking person to represent you. We are going to have, we're always doing that by the way, in every module, meetings with those representatives. These representatives are your voices. They'll come to me and talk about your complaints, your wishes, about you, your own classroom. So it's really very important. Okay. And your advisors, another very important people. Your advisors, Generally, they are your main course teachers who can see you more in the classroom. You can share your problems, your complaints, your wishes with them again. They are responsible of solving your problems. And they are also responsible when there is something more important to tell it to me and the testing office. Okay. Write to them, you know their mail address very well because they're on the website. And I'm very sure that they will 
give the response or answer you immediately. When I say immediately, I don't mean that a minute later, of course. Sometimes, well, let's gossip. I know that there are some students writing sometimes to me at 2 a.m. in the morning, and they're waiting for an, they're waiting for a response. So, be or limit yourself into normal standard lifetimes. Okay. But I'm very sure that they will give a response a day later, maximum. And these are our mail addresses. Again, you know them very well. There is our assistant, Sueda. This is my dearest Leon Hoja from Testing, Testing Coordinator. And this is me. By the way, don't go anywhere, listen to me. By the way, I have a problem with you. Whenever you give me, you write to me, I always answer. I do. And you know that very well because uh, we become like pen pals. You're writing, I'm responding. You're writing, I'm responding. Although this is the situation, you sometimes prefer to write or duplicate your writing to call center. Why are you doing that? Because all of them come to me at the end and I'm answering them. So please make a shortcut. Write to me and Sueda. If you believe that we didn't solve the problem, then of course, Anytime you want to, you can write to Chosun Merkeze, to the Solution Center. But, again, we have a but. What is that but? The question cannot be this. Teacher, I was sleeping at the time of the exam. I want to take the exam again. Whenever you write, in which stage, in, in which department, you will write this, the answer is going to be no. You cannot take it again. Or, teacher, the class hours are too many. We just want to be here for 10 hours. No. So, write some reasonable things. All right. Or think about that. You entered into the proficiency exam, you couldn't pass, and you're asking for favor, saying that, Hoja, can I take the proficiency exam again? The answer is no. It is under rules and regulations, and it is again on our website. It is accepted by our Board of Trustees in the Senate, so it is not something changeable. It doesn't differ from person to person or how many times you write to me. The answer is always no. So let's understand each other. We're setting the rules. We are obeying our rules. And we are expecting you to obey the rules as responsible successful, lovely students. Okay? One moment. If it is finished, no. Is it really very important to say? Maybe you can forget about it. Is that the situation? Somebody was holding hand? No? Okay. And these ones, these ones. The Learning Center, the Speaking Club, and the Writing Center. These are all very popular activities. Yeah, I told you that in B1 and B2, you have 21 hours of teaching, studying, or learning. And in A1 and A2, you have 25, 24 hours of studies. But that doesn't mean that. That's the only thing you can do at school. After school for A1 and A2, and before school hours for B1 and B2, I mean in the morning, 
you can, and I'm sure that you will, attend the learning centers, the speaking club, and the writing center. What for? Especially when it is before the exam, in module exam, end of module assessment. You are desperately in need of some more lessons. Or think about that, uh, you can't catch up with the students, something went wrong. I mean, you didn't understand or you don't understand some subject or topic, then any time. It doesn't ma matter that how many hours you'd like to, you can ask your advisors to organize you, plan you about the learning center, which is about main course and reading classes, the writing center about the writing classes, of course, and the speaking club. Speaking class is extremely popular. Our faculty students are still entering into it because it is fun also. It, that speaking club is not a class hour. Others are also not class hours. They are for your own sake in order to make yourself develop more. Okay? And the writing exams. I told you we have two types of writing exams. One is the timed writing and the other is the graded process writing. Timed writing is something limited in 15 minutes or 60 minutes. It depends on if you're writing a paragraph or an essay. You know, in the paragraphs, my voice is good. In the paragraphs, like that. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Uh, well, you have shorter time. In the essay type, because you're writing something more in essays, then you have 60 or 70 minutes time. And that is the timed writing. The other one is a little bit complicated. But we believe that you can learn things by errors. So it really helps the students to implement themselves in writing. It has two stages. First, you're writing your first draft in the exam situation. And the, the teacher of yours are just collecting them, going home, and putting the error correction symbols on them. The error correction symbols are the symbols which canalize you or direct you to write better in writing. Something like you believe, for example, there is a problem in the article. So it says art. For example, you didn't say that you, the students, but you say a students, let's say. So there is a fault in it, right? things like that. So after all, your teacher, again in the exam situation, gives you back the teacher, gives you back the papers, your exam papers. And then by checking the error correction symbols on your papers, you're trying to rewrite it. It's a very nice process. It makes you understand how to write the essays. And it's also a kind of bonus to you. Why? Because they are graded. We're giving you grades for that. Use it efficiently. And what else do we have? We have, if I can, yeah. These are the modules we talked about it. That's the summer school. Yeah, we have the official summer school for the repeat speed students after school, I mean, after June. And the attendance, yes, I said, you must attend the classes for 80%, and think about that, you don't, you didn't do that, and it is time for failure, and what are we doing? We are taking your hand to enter into the end of module assessment which is 50%. Think about that you have had all of the exams in your hands. It is just the 50% of the program. And because of absenteeism, you cannot enter into the end of module assessment. It means that you're failing. 
don't do this to yourself. Okay, don't. What else? The academic calendar. Where can you find the academic calendar? Where is that? Nowhere around? Where is it? On the website. Which website? You see? Look at here. Look at here. It's there. It is not something changeable. Very specific. The dates are on it. Very clear. So never and ever come and tell or email or send messages saying that, well, I have no idea about where or when we're going to take the exam. Finally, somehow I understand that there was an exam on that day. No. The dates are very clear, and it's on the calendar. Here it is. You can find it. Look at the arrow. It's there. OK? Find it. And in any case, your teachers, your advisors will send you the time of the exams for sure on sticks, on WhatsApp messages, on the website announcements, and everywhere. But it is there right now. Yes. Happy that we finished. OK, now, uh, yes. Uh, very important thing. Don't go anywhere. You know, this week, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday program at school, right? So we have just Friday in our hands to have the online program. Is that right? Right. So for this week, just for this week, Tomorrow is the online day. What will happen next week? Wednesday is online. What about the other days? Face to face. OK. Any questions, guys? Yes, please. Uh, please, I am uh, A2 student. I want to be C student. How the best way? I couldn't understand. I am a uh, A2 student. You I are an A2 student. Yeah, I want now, to go be. Go step by step. You're an A2 student. Yes. I want to be a C student. C. You want to study in C? Yeah, but. Uh, Half come. C. And mathematically and physically, they don't have a chance of doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. But don't worry. If you want to be a C student, I will teach it to you by myself. Uh, Come to that point, and we will talk about it. OK. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope we all have a successful year. I'm wishing this for all of us.
Monday. Ben Siyaset Bilimi ve Uluslararası İlişkiler Bölümünden Işık Nergis. Önce mutlu olmak, sonra da diplomat olmak istedim hep. Mutlu olmadan olduğu şeyin önemi yoktur çünkü. Hadi o zaman size neden mutlu bir diplomat olmak için Üsküdar Üniversitesi'ni tercih ettiğimden bahsedeyim. Bölümde dünya ve Türkiye meselelerine hakim, analitik düşünce yapısını benimsemiş, eleştirebilen ve çözümleyen, kendisini sürekli yenileyen, girişimci, sorgulayıcı, etik değerleri benimseyen, ortak çalışmaya ve demokratik katılma yatkın bir birey olmak hedefleniyor. Temel olarak küresel ilişkileri, siyasi, ekonomik ve kültürel süreçlerin iç ilişkilerine disiplinler arası bir bakış açısıyla kavramı becerisi kazandırmaya yönelik bir eğitim alıyorsun. Profesör Doktor Deniz Ülke Arı 